checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. So Will Ospreay's doing a promo backstage. Don Callis walks up. Will says, you don't have to say anything. It's not your fault. It's my fault. And then he says, I knocked down the ref, and I just couldn't bring myself to do the Tiger Driver. And I was like, that is not what happened at all. You were excited to go for the Tiger Driver, and Swerve reversed it. Yeah. That's why you didn't hit it. Yeah. But and, I thought, and, and that was supposed to be the story. Yeah, they're telling the, he's telling the story that we thought they were going to tell, but that's actually not what he did in the match. They, he didn't do it in the match, no. You're right. You're so right. He says, you gave me Omega, gave me Jericho. I owe you so much, but I want out of this place. And Don, wanted out of, the, out of the family. Out of the family. And Don says, normally not in the habit of letting people out of a signed agreement, but I'm so proud of you, what you've done here. Happy to do you the favor. But maybe, he says, one day I'll ask you for a favor. And he hugged and told him he'd be world champion someday. And he had that look on his face looking into the camera. And then he says, come on, Kyle. And so Kyle left with him. Going to be interesting. Because you think that, that they're going to do Will and Kyle soon. Um, and then there's also Takeshita in there. I mean, because gonna, he's going to feud with someone from the Callis family. Well, hey, I don't point. think the Callis family feud is starting yet. Was the impression no, not now. I got from watching this. Not, 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 not yet, but it has no. to happen. At it some point, happen. yes, because Don's going to want a favor. Yeah, it has to happen. And that's when it's all going to go south. Yeah. So Jericho comes out. I mean, it, it, it shouldn't happen until after Wembley. Oh yeah, we got to We got to We got to build this thing up first. Because it's got to be. It's got to be him and him and Max. It's got to be. Because the they point. they played this up as this is a cordial split. Yeah, and but it never is. Later, it will not be. Yeah. So Jericho comes out. He says Taz, a supposedly unbiased announcer, cheering for a hook like a mark. It's gimmick infringement. So Taz, I talked to Nick and Matt, and uh, I can't be around Taz when I do commentary, so Taz, you're out of here. And Taz had to leave for the rest of the show. So it's Joe and Shabbat and Hook versus the Gates of Agony. And the heels ended up trying a triple suplex at the end. The babyface switched in a triple choke. has got a triple submission. So then Jericho says, I'm going to go congratulate him. But it's a distraction. Big Bill and Brian Keith hit the ring. They destroy these guys with chair shots. Brian Keith tears off his sling. So he actually canceled indie dates for an injury that ended up a being a work. That was a worked injury. Yes. Well, that's probably Jer Jericho teaching. I get. Uh, hey, I was. I mean, he kind of after that one. I mean, he he, he kind of had to in this day and age because he was if he was wrestling anywhere, everybody would know. So that would tell everyone that the injuries would work. So, like, you know, if it was a different era and you didn't, you know, you 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 could get away with it, but you can't get away with that. So he kind of he kind of had to. I think. I mean, there's no there was really no way around it. So he destroyed everybody, and they hit Hook with brass knucks, and he gigged, and then they power bombed him through a t choke slam through a table from Big Bill, and uh, good heavy heat angle. Hook was uh, laid out, taken mm -hmm. to the back, and then later he gets burned with a fireball from Chris mm -hmm. Jericho. So, so probably Jericho and Hook for the FTW title at Wembley. Yeah, we talked about that last week. I think that's yeah. that's most likely. Yeah, yeah. Jeff Jarrett and the EVP's wild card hangman page. You know, actually, I just thought about this. Yes. Uh, you know, Hook pinned Jericho. In the tag. At the, so, the pay-per-view. And we yes. were wondering, well, why'd you do that if, you know, Minoru Suzuki has already challenged Jericho for well, a future still, date? They can still do Minoru Suzuki and Jericho. Well, my point with, is, with now you've, you've gotten rid of Hook for a while. He's burned to a crisp and right. destroyed. So that yeah. makes room for someone else to get a title shot in the middle of this. Sure, sure. So the EVP's wild card. Well, 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 so 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 hopefully Hook sells it for a couple weeks. Well, yeah, that would be the idea. I mean, that doesn't always happen. I mean, they break, you know, they 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 do heinous stuff and guys come back a week later all well, the time. Well, that would make no sense in this storyline, then, would it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and not, not just AEW. WWE does it as well. Everyone does it now. Okay, so this Hangman thing. I mean, look at Chad Gable. Hangman was the wild card. It was not yes. Christian. It was Hangman. Yeah. And. Uh, Long story short, he faces Jeff Jarrett, and he is a total asshole heel. I mean, overly Everything aggressive, stomping Me him, killing him, not Me breaking. I mean, just beating Me him up brutally. Mean, mean face, yep. a little bit. Total a little heel. Bit. Total heel, total heel look. 
Jared had to be a babyface anyway. Well, of I course. Mean, but, I mean, yeah. this was not like a babyface match. He was the total heel. Oh, yeah. Pins him with the dead eye, kills him. And then later, the Bucks walk up, and they say, welcome back, Hanger. They're, of course, heels as well. And they say, we lifted your suspension, got him a spot in the O, and you killed it. And Matt says, you know, we'll scratch your back, you scratch ours. So then a hangman grabs him, and he says, I'm not a child anymore. I'm not a puppet. I don't need any more of your bullshit games. I'm in the Owen, and I'm in the Owen to win it. And he walked off, and I was like, so is he a babyface? Because that was the least babyface match I've ever seen with poor Jeff Jarrett. I mean, it, it, who knows? You know, exactly. Who knows? This was not made clear here tonight. Everything's situational. You know, I mean, babyface heel just depends on who you're facing and what's what's the story. Well, you know, if the I, guy, my point is, if the guy is going to be a babyface, I don't but, think he needed to murder Jeff Jarrett in this particular match. Well, he's not a he's not going to be a babyface. I don't think unless the situation arises. Like if he faces if he faces the young bucks, he could be a babyface. But it's way too early to do that anyway. If you're going to do that, that's like you know I you know. That's way, that should be way down the line. Right now, just he's, you know, it looks like he's going to be healed, but he's just going to be not aligned with the the Young Bucks and Okada. We had Osprey and Daniel Garcia international title MJF at ringside. It's a very good match. I thought, and, match was, I thought the match was great, especially towards the end. They really, they really picked up. Uh, it was really great at the end. So Garcia hits a pile driver, and MJF offers him the ring. And Garcia at first takes it, thinks about it, throws it back to MJF. So they're exchanging cradles. MJF screaming to use the ring. Garcia takes it again. Once again, he gives it back, which actually got some boos, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And then Will hits him with a hidden blade as he's distracted, and he pins him. And MJF's all pissed off, and Garcia's crying, and Will's giving him a pep talk. And Will ends up leaving. And so MJF goes in the ring, and he gets in his, his ear, and he says, that's, that's not on, It's not on you. It's on me. You busted your ass. These people still love you. And he helps him up, raises his hand, he hugs him, and then he kicks him right in the balls. And he puts on the diamond ring, clobbers daddy magic, he gigs, he's bleeding all over the place. Spits on Garcia, punches him out. Garcia's blows, now bleeding. Blow, blow, blows his nose on him, does every heel trick he can come up with. So the fans at first are chanting for MJF and he's our scumbag. But yeah. man, he keeps killing this guy and killing this guy. And then he's going to give him a brain buster, but he changes his mind. Takes him up to the middle rope. Middle rope tombstone. They sold it like a major injury. Brought out the neck brace, the stretcher, the whole nine yards. And finally, Osprey returns, and he chases MGF out of the ring. MGF almost gets in a fight with a fan. Security has to get between them. And uh, the days of MGF as a babyface are officially over. We oh, have yeah. plenty of babyfaces now, yeah. and so he has turned. Yeah, and, of course, bad. the only question is, does Adam Cole return as a babyface now? I don't know. Or is he just dead in the water at this point with this feud? Well, Adam Cole's going to be with the Roderick Strong group. So maybe he's going to be doing something. I don't know. And where does Kyle, how does Kyle O'Reilly fit in? He's back being recruited by those guys. Yep, I do not know. But MGF, I can tell you this, is going back to being the top heel. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's going to wrestle Osprey in Wembley. Certainly and, what it looks like. It pretty much has to be. It certainly does appear that way. Yeah. Well, I mean, he destroyed Daniel Garcia and stretchered him out and everything like that, but he had promised Daniel Garcia that he would be getting the match at Wembley, so they have to either I mean, they, keep... They, they, either they Garcia's could, out until after Wembley... Or they could do a three-way. Or they got to do a three-way or figure something out there. Or, yeah, or Garcia's, none, you know, not there. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. You have a commute... Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, 
Full access to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.